Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for being here today. We are the main DOE assessment team, which resides within the Office of Federal Programs, and we want to take this opportunity to welcome each of you to our first assessment team virtual office hours of the 23-24 school year. We're going to begin today with a couple of reminders and quick introductions. Uh, before we get started, I want to share some housekeeping items first. This session is being recorded. All of our office hour sessions are recorded. And the links to the recording, along with our slide deck and Q&A document, will be posted later on the MECAS homepage. Please go ahead and log your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. We will have space at the end of the session um, to address those questions as a team. Also, those will be later captured in our Q&A document. So with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started and Krista will be giving us some general reminders and we'll have some team intros. Hi everyone, I'm Krista Averill. I'm the assessment coordinator for our general assessments, which would be the main three year assessment and the main science assessment. So today we'll be talking to you about some updates for the general assessments, as well as the national and international assessments and the alternate and ELP assessments. And then we'll be moving into our assessment security webinar. So I'm gonna turn it back to Jody for an introduction. Hi, and for those of you who I haven't had the opportunity to meet yet, my name is Jody Bossio smith I am currently serving as the coordinator of the assessment team. I'm also the state coordinator for alternate and ELP assessments, and I'll pass it over to Dr. Regina Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Regina Lewis, the coordinator for the national and international assessments. You're all, I'm all the, the ones that you all love. And I will pass it on to Leah Jarvis. Hi, I'm Leah Jarvis. I am the newest member to the assessment team. Um, I come to you from the state of Massachusetts Department of Higher Ed, um, where I did data auditing and institutional research. And here at the assessment team, I'm gonna help them with the data needs and uh, analysis. Was I supposed to hand it off to somebody? Whoever, okay. So as a reminder, or for those of you who may be new to the district assessment coordinator role, technical assistance around our main educational assessments is available to all SAUs upon request. We are actually starting to get out into the field beginning next week um, to offer some in-person technical assistance based on requests. We also have targeted technical assistance, which we continue to center on um, the topic of assessment participation across assessments. So not just our general assessments, but including our assessments of English language proficiency and our alternate assessments for students with significant cognitive disabilities. So just a reminder that that's available and the link to request technical assistance um, will be in the slide deck. So first we'll start with our updates for the main through year assessment. This year, there are three administrations of the main through year assessment, a required fall administration, an optional winter administration, and a required spring administration. Thank you. So the required fall administration is October 2nd through the 27th. So please be aware that students must be rostered in Synergy in order to appear in the Acacia platform. The way this works is at 8 p.m. on weekdays. A daily roster file is created containing all of the updates in Synergy from that day. And then at about 8 a.m. the next weekday, the file is uploaded by a member of the assessment team into Acacia. Um, but please be aware that this upload process does take some time. And so please be patient in the morning when you're checking for those students. As a note, we are currently having errors in rostering about 5% of our students due to a setting within the Acacia platform, and we are working with NWEA to resolve that as quickly as possible. If you're looking for guidance on enrollment, including for special populations, such as homeschooled students and international students, you can find that information in the main comprehensive assessment system guidelines or the MECAS guidelines. And I'll be posting the link to these slides in the chat in just a moment so that you'll have that link. Next slide, please. 
For the main three-year assessment, release of the summative spring 2023 data will happen in two stages. On Thursday, September 28th, the complete student score data file containing both the main specific scaled scores and the RIT scores will be made available. It is similar to the preliminary student score data file, but it also has that main specific scaled score information. Like the preliminary student score data file, it's found under the operational reports in Acacia and it is a CSV file. Then on October 2nd, Access to the online reporting system with both aggregated reports and individual student reports will become available. You may have noticed that the student scores option in the menu and the view report shortcut icon are no longer visible in Acacia because they weren't functional. So they will re reappear on October 2nd when all reports become available. Next slide, please. So this is a slide with many links and that's why I am going to drop the link to the slide presentation in just a moment. If you could just go back to the previous slide, please. Thank you. So we do have a required proctor training video. That video contains both some assessment security information and a lot of practical information for proctors about the three-year assessment. Um, so things that are relevant specifically to proctoring, like what do I do if a student shows up late? What do I do if they need to take a break? What if I, what do I do if they don't finish? So those sorts of things. We also have several manuals and guides available on the connections page. So you can see here who each of those manuals or guides is intended for. Um, we have some that are specifically for assessment coordinators. If you have a data administrator in your SAU that helps you manage user roles in the map growth platform, you may want to also share the user and student management guide with them. We recommend that you share the accessibility guide with your special education directors and with educators. And then for proctors, there's the administration manual and the manage online testing guide. If your proctors are proctoring by proximity and not using manage online testing, then that last guide wouldn't be necessary. We also have additional resources on the main DOEs page. These include recordings of trainings and informational sessions, the required proctor training video, assessment blueprints, the math reference sheet, and more. Next slide, please. We also have a lot of upcoming sessions, professional learning sessions and informational sessions. So on the 14th from three to four, we have our accessibility in the through year assessment session. We have our second RIT score comparability session on September 18th at three o'clock. And then we did previously have our first RIT score comparability session on August 31st. The recording slides and Q&A are currently on our website. Just note that session two will not repeat any of the information from session one. It is new information. So if you did not have the opportunity to attend session one, I do recommend viewing the slides and or watching the recording. Next slide, please. And then we also have many sessions coming up that are being led by NWEA's professional learning team. Again, I will be dropping the link to the slides in the chat in just a moment so that you have all of these, but we do have a using ach achievement levels to ensure rigor session coming up. We have many sessions for intro to reports for both administrators and teachers. And then we have a multiple data sources session coming up. You might notice that on October 6th, we have two sessions for intro to reports for teachers and two for using multiple data sources. We recognize that that is a popular PD day, so we're offering additional sessions on that day. Next slide, please. And lastly, moving on to the main science assessment, the spring 24 administration window is May 13th through May 24th of 2024. And for your spring 2023 student score reports, we are working with KU Achievement and Assessment Institute to develop these new score reports. These new score reports will be at the SAU school and student levels, and we anticipate their availability next month, October. Next slide. And I will hand it over to Regina. Sorry about that, folks. My computer is way more sensitive than uh, 
I knew when I go to drive these slides. Okay, things with NAEP and the international assessment. The primary assessment this year is um, NAEP itself. NAEP has some changes coming. You'll, you know, traditional. It has the same traditional window, um, last week of January into the first week of March. Uh, the, and we are still sending teams into schools. We are still providing the devices. Uh, changes are we have a new assessment management system. So there's a different process for um, registration. Um, we're transitioning to a device agnostic assessment as in all things NAEP. This is part of a research study. So at the current time, about approximately half of the devices will be Chromebooks and half of them will be the traditional Microsoft surfaces. Um, but again, NAEP is providing those. The, the big change here is this year we'll be requesting to use the school internet. And there's a process for that that we have to we go through. We also, uh, this, as traditional, we'll need a school coordinator, which is our main point of contact. And, but new to this year is the on-site technology coordinator, which will be the person in the building that helps us troubleshoot um, if we have any trouble with the school internet, there are so we also have a backed up system. So if the school your school internet will not take uh, the added 28 devices we need per session or more, depending upon the size of the sample at your school, we will have uh, the ability to use our own internet as in years previous. Um, so the upcoming steps for for NAEP are the, the in the next two days I'll be sending out assessment details to the principals. This the detail the letter will include a link to a Qualtrics survey in which in which I will ask them to designate the school coordinator, which again is the main point of contact, and an on-site technology coordinator, which will help who will help us through this process of um making sure the internet is ready for the NAEP administration. And um, the district assessment coordinators, all of you out there, you're welcome to um, sign up for or register to receive the um, uh, access to the assessment management system. I'd be happy to send you an inv invitation if you'd like to. If you'd like, if you want to uh, to get gain access, just please pop me an email. My email is provided in this slide. It's also um, throughout this presentation whenever you see our contacts. Oh, good. Now I can't drive the slides. There we go. So you, what do you need to do? You need to request access. Um, then you will receive an invite. The invite will um, specifically have a button for you to activate your account. You follow the instructions and then you can log in. Um, you will need to complete a security agreement as with all things assessment. Um, again, the data is private, including the sample. We don't publicize the schools that were selected uh, and we don't and no one should know the students that were selected. Okay, so with the principals, school coordinators and on-site technology coordinators will also follow a similar uh, registration process and they will have, um, you know, the principals will have similar privileges, but the, each, uh, each position has its own specific tasks. And uh, just make sure you have personnel up to date in NEO and, uh, and forward any changes in principles at the schools to me so I can get them changed in the AMS. We, they're already in there and ready for contact. Uh, as a district co assessment coordinator, if you should elect to re uh, register for the our assessment management system, you will have access to this page. It's hard to see here, but it's a a district level page. And then you also get to oversee and see what's happening on the, at the school level. So if they need some assistance or some reminders about, you know, which tasks they need to perform or, or they have some upcoming deadlines, your school person, you, you have, you can view what school personnel um, are, you know, on track or what needs to be done next and what's upcoming. And so things are a little different in Nate, but uh, this year, but I think it's more transparent and we, and more team oriented. And I'll be passing it on to Jody. Hi everyone. So we're gonna segue now into our alternate assessments based on alternate academic achievement standards. 
the MSAA and the MSAA science. The alternate assessment reporting window for spring 2023 results was open from July 17th through September 8th. Anyone with a district level test coordinator account um, was able to go into the MSA platform and download district school and student reports during that time frame. This year, the MSA administration window will be open from March 11th through April 26th, 2024. We have kicked off our alternate assessment training series earlier this week. We had a session titled Overview of the 1% and Maine's Alternate Assessments with about 50 registrants for the session. Um, most of them seemed to be primarily special education directors as well as some of the folks serving as alternate assessment coordinators at the district level. The slide deck from that presentation as well as the recording will be available on our MSAA webpage later this week for those of you who may not have been able to attend, but are interested. We also have several more trainings coming up this fall, and the topics for those include alternate academic achievement standards, action planning for the 1%, as well as a new MSAA test coordinator training. Next slide, please, Gina. Thank you. Our access and alternate access for ELL's administration window this year will open on January 8th and goes through March 3rd, 2024. We do have our first overview training coming up this Monday, September 18th at 3 p.m. It's designed specifically for new access coordinators, but it is open to everyone and includes some of the state specific details um, that are unique to Maine. Um, those with experience as well as new coordinators are welcome to attend. I will also mention that there are many WIDA trainings going on right now in terms of what's new in WIDA AMS, which is the management system, as well as trainings for coordinators and administrators. If you need a login or a credential for the WIDA Secure Portal, where you can view assessment trainings and join WIDA webinars, please don't hesitate to email me following the presentation today. The registration links for all of our assessment trainings, including access trainings, are available via the main DOE events calendar on our website. Right now, we're also working with WIDA to ensure that all districts and schools have been updated via WIDA AMS. Thank you to Leah um, for helping us to prepare that file and to ensure that our districts and schools um, are set up correctly to be able to administer the screening for students who will potentially be identified as multilingual learners. On that note, please remind your local colleagues who work with the multilingual learners that if a new student is identified for the first time, an EL start date will need to be shared with whomever at the local level is coordinating enrollment to Synergy. In November, following the state enrollment deadlines, we upload the student roster to WIDA AMS um, and the students who are included on that assessment roster are the students with the EL start dates and synergy to ensure that we have an accurate file and students are accurately represented in the platform. We do need to make sure that those EL start dates are registered in the state information system. This also is how we facilitate the ordering process for each SAU. So it's pretty important. I'm going to pause the recording now.